In 1998, the International Space Station construction began in orbit, and by mid-2000, the first astronauts were on board. The orbiting research station has been continually occupied ever since, but the end is now coming near. NASA is planning to stop the main operations in 2030 and then destroy the station the following year. And they've just announced the first part of the plan to do just that. The ISS is a joint project between five space agencies. That's NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, CSA, the European Space Agency, ESA, JAXA, the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, and Russia's Roscosmos Corporation. The ISS is the largest human-made object to ever orbit the Earth, and it's 356 feet long and weighs 450 tonne. It is incredibly impressive. Over 270 astronauts have lived on board, conducting over 3,300 experiments in microgravity over the last 25 years. It is now starting to show signs of aging, but it still remains an incredibly valuable scientific asset to all of us. I mean, just building something this big in orbit around Earth was impressive, but keeping it going for so long is equally remarkable. Since 1998, the five agencies have operated the ISS together in a frankly remarkable international collaboration. Each space agency manages and controls the hardware that they provide to the station, and the safe deorbit of the ISS is the responsibility of all five agencies. As the end comes closer, Russia has threatened to pull out of the ISS a few times, but it's currently committed to it until at least 2028, while the other agencies are currently committed through 2030, and that's when we expect the end of human occupation of the station. After that, the ISS will need to be safely deorbited, with much of it expected to burn up on re-entry through Earth's atmosphere. However, even if it's broken up into its component modules before re-entry, many of these are large enough that we expect a significant amount of it to survive the re-entry burn and reach the Earth's surface. Because of this, we can't just leave it alone and let its orbit decay naturally. Friction from the Earth's atmosphere slows down the ISS's orbit and it requires frequent booster firings to stay in its roughly 400 km high orbit. A lot of the time, it's over inhabited places and we just can't leave it and hope it doesn't hit somewhere populated. But if left alone, it will eventually crash to Earth. As a result, NASA has announced that SpaceX has been selected to develop, build and deliver the US deorbit vehicle which is the spacecraft that will be able to deorbit the ISS and ensure that it does not land on any of our heads. This contract alone is worth up to $843 million, and that doesn't include whatever rocket launches it in the first place. At the moment, we don't really know much more about the vehicle itself. We don't know what it will look like or any more detail on how the ISS will be taken apart and safely directed to a safe descent. I guess it will be some sort of spaceship tugboat, specifically designed for this unique mission. We can expect the target for the ISS to land to be a place called Point Nemo. Located in the South Pacific Ocean, this is the point in the ocean that's furthest away from any land, with the closest shore over 2,000 kilometers away. It's officially called the South Pacific Oceanic Uninhabited Area, but we tend to call it the Satellite Graveyard as this is the final resting place for many satellites once their mission ends. It provides the safest target on Earth and the lowest chance of hitting any people, boats or buildings. Because even if you miss Point Nemo exactly, you're probably going to still land in the ocean. Once SpaceX builds and delivers the deorbit vehicle, it will then be handed over to NASA to operate throughout the actual deorbiting mission. So NASA will pay SpaceX to deorbit and effectively destroy the ISS in 2031. But that wasn't always the inevitable outcome. The agency also considered selling the station to someone private, but it's not actually clear who even has the right to sell the ISS, given that it's operated by the five agencies together. They also looked at if it was possible to break it apart and reuse some of the hardware on future missions. But that's just become too complicated and probably more importantly here, too expensive to be considered viable right now. Going forward, NASA will be focusing on its deep space exploration at the Moon and at Mars, including its Artemis and Lunar Gateway programs. They're really expecting private companies to be playing a much larger role in the future of space exploration. Once companies like SpaceX, Axiom, or even Blue Origin begin to develop and populate orbiting facilities, it simply won't be practical to maintain the ISS, and they will likely just use these private facilities more and more, paying for their astronauts to be allowed on board. 
So 2031 will be the end of an incredible scientific era. And we now know that SpaceX are the ones that will build the vehicle to bring it all down. It will end three decades of continuous human presence in orbit around the Earth and an international collaboration that is frankly unlikely to be replicated anytime soon. There will be new space stations too. I mean, China already has one, but perhaps not another ISS. Shoot me any questions or comments down below and thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, stay safe to you. I'll see you soon. Bye.